I've been rewatching Star Trek The Next Generation. It's been quite a long time since I watched it, and three things stand out. First are the two big lies that they tell in the show that, first of all, there's a bright future ahead. I doubt it. <laughs> and the second one is that people are reasonable, that you can reach a reasonable, uh, you know, conclusion if you apply facts and logic. Big lie right there. So the third thing that stands out is the amount of room treatment they have in that set built into the design of the starship and is particularly obvious in Picard's office, I guess you could call it. Maybe it's called his ready room in the show or whatever. It is, it has all of the walls with this material that's obviously covering some kind of absorbent stuff underneath. And I thought that was interesting. And that'll be an interesting way to do a room and do it in such a way that it's not really, you know, obtrusive. I know everybody wants to see hard walls and, and whatever, and maybe they're not crazy about cloth on the wall, but I think it can be done in an attractive way. The other thing that I want to talk about, and once again, it has to do with room treatment, is what's known as the Haas effect or the precedence effect. And this is the finding that a lot of the uh, thinking behind how, like leaving your room somewhat reflective is based on. And it's where if you have two sounds, if they're separated by less than 40 milliseconds, that's 40 thousandths of a second, and then your ears will detect them as one sound. And we're talking specifically about reflections here. Reflections are never as strong as the direct sound. So you have the direct sound is strong. The reflected sound is less strong. The precedence effect or the Haas effect says that you're going to locate that sound as coming from the direct source of sound or the speaker. But it will also kick in that reflection as kind of a spatial cue. And I made a video talking about reflections before, and I talked about my room here and how I've gone out of my way to try to get rid of as many of the reflections as I can. That's not happening in my room right now, by the way. I'm like, I did the floor and I'm, I'm painting the walls and I, I don't have my panels in here. The panels on the side walls are the ones that get rid of that side wall reflection. So I only have the, well, I don't only have it because this is not a completely reflection free room. People say anechoic when they talk about a treated room as if that's at all possible, anywhere short of a million dollars and a huge space to do the treatment in. I mean, the closest you act can actually come to anechoic is wearing headphones. Anything else that's in a room is going to be a lot less than anechoic. You're still going to have a lot of reflections. The point is to control the reflections. Anyway, to get back to the house effect, my panels get rid of that sidewall reflection. I have two that I locate on, on the walls and they pick up the reflection, the first reflection from this speaker off that wall and then the right side speaker off that wall. So there's two panels there that are positioned so that they catch those two reflections, direct reflections. So I'm only, I'm mostly getting the direct sound. So it cuts off those reflections. I'm also getting a bit of a ceiling balance, but once again, as I said in other videos, my ceiling here is one big absorber. It has slats on it that are diffusers kind of. And, um, my floor, I'm not getting a floor bounce here because I'm fairly close to these speakers. The arms on this chair that I'm sitting in are gigantic. So when I'm leaning back, like when I'm reclining enough, they actually block the sound from the floor bounce. So the floor, the sound comes from the speaker, it hits the floor, and then it hits the arm of the chair before it reaches my ears. Okay, so I don't have to worry about a floor bounce here. Even if I did, I wouldn't do anything to try to treat it. Carpet will not treat that reflection. It'll only get rid of the highest frequencies. 
anyway, to get back to the Haas effect once again, the direct sound from the speaker, the reflected sound, your ear picks those up as being the same sound. And the claim is that it makes the sound stage wider. I don't find that to be the case here in my room where I'm treating those reflections because I have a very wide sound stage to begin with, what, like the widest I've ever experienced I'm having in this room. That doesn't say anything about what actually happens with the sound, the direct sound and the reflected sound. What happens is the direct sound comes at your ear. It arrives at time A. The reflected sound takes longer. So it's slightly out of phase with sound A and it causes comb filtering. So what you're actually hearing is the result of that comb filtering and not the original signal. And that will have a real audible impact on what you're listening to. And think about it. What do people say when they want you to listen to something very carefully? They tell you to put on headphones. That's the only way you're going to cut out all the stuff that makes what you're hearing less clear.